Hey guys, Tammy here. And in this video, we're going to talk about the question of can I move? Now, you know, I've had a couple recent videos on like at the breaking point, vacating the family home, leaving without telling the other person where you're going, what you're doing, all that kind of stuff. But in this video, it's going to be a little bit different issue around moving. And it's more like, you know, you've been apart for a while, you've got a parenting plan in place, all those kinds of things. And now you find yourself needing to move out of the area that you're living in. So can you move? The short answer is you can move anywhere you want. The problem is, can you move the children? <laughs> okay. And I know that's a not much of a distinction, but it is a, a distinction that's true. So I always like to help you understand it so you can kind of wrap your head around how the court approaches this, okay? Before we dive into this topic, as always, let me just remind you, if you like my content, you like this video, please hit like. Also subscribe to the channel so that you're not notified as new videos are released. And as I've been saying, 70% of you watching this are not subscribed to the channel. Please go subscribe. I need the love. Helps me create more content. Helps more people find me. And, you know, we need all the help we can get. So you help me, I help you, and we all have a win-win. So when you're talking about moving, okay, like I said, the first thing to understand is the court can't restrict you. Like your freedoms can't be restricted in that way. You can move, okay? The question becomes, in light of one parent's decision to move, what is the best parenting schedule for the children? Because they can't say, oh, you, you have to stay here so that there's not this distance and so that we're not in this dilemma. You have to stay here and stay put. They, they can't say that, okay? Like I said, you're allowed to move. You're an adult. You're free. You're, you know, you're allowed to move wherever you want to live. The question again is then what happens for the children? Now, I will tell you that if you're in a situation where you have been in a parenting plan, one of the things that they are definitely going to look at is how long have the children been where they are now? Okay. Like, have they been in this school for a few years? Do they have friends? Are they established in the community? You know, do they have extracurriculars here that they participate in? Um, how big of a disruption is it going to be to them? And one of the other things is, you know, with the other parent, what is the parenting schedule? Like, does the other parent have less parenting time to where even if you moved, they could still essentially accomplish the same amount of parenting time they're getting now just in a more condensed version of it? Or is this move really going to thwart their parenting? And of course, some of that is dependent on how far are you going to move? You know, moving 30 minutes or an hour away or something like that is very, very different from moving across the country 2,000 miles away, right? That becomes much more difficult. One of the very first things you always, always, always want to do is go check your orders. A lot of times there are parameters in your orders that say whether you can move, what you have to do if you decide to move. Like, do you have to notify the other parent? Do you have to get an order from the court if the other parent doesn't agree? If you have primary custody or you have full legal or something like that, then it probably just would say something like you need to notify the other parent, but you don't necessarily need permission. If you're talking about a joint custody situation, then you probably need their permission to move the child. And if they won't grant you permission, then your only other option is to ask the court for orders on that issue. So again, first thing is always go back and read your orders so that you understand what you need to do to be able to move. Okay. Because the last thing that you want to do is move, then find out that you didn't have the right to to move the child under the orders and then the court orders the child back to the jur back to the jurisdiction, back to where they were living. And I've seen that happen. I have seen parents move without, you know, doing anything or going through the proper channels. And I've even seen parents that 
sent the other parent a message and the other parent didn't say anything or object or anything. So they assumed that they had permission and then they leave and then the court and then the other parent files in court and then the court goes, oh no, wait a minute. You didn't have, you know, any agreement from the other parent. You didn't have an order from the court. So yeah, the child needs to come back. So make sure that you don't make that a mistake. But when we start talking about moving, you know, we have to consider what does the, what are all the different things the court looks at? Okay. Now I will tell you that, you know, best interest of the child obviously is kind of always the guidepost in every state. Every state's got their own definition of that. But the way that the court applies best interest to move away, or sometimes they're called relocation, is based on appeals cases in your state, appellate cases, okay? So you want to, you know, go out and look up appellate cases for your state on move aways or relocations. That will kind of show you how the court court has historically decided on these issues. Now, again, I think that if you have a child that's older, let's say you have a child that's 10, 11, 12, you know, been in their same school for five, six years, maybe both sides of the extended family, your family and your co-parents family all live within kind of the general area. Uh, the children are involved in karate and basketball in the community. They have a church they go to regularly. All these kinds of things are going to be more and more factors in favor of the child remaining where they are. Okay. And I know sometimes like for financial reasons or affordability or whatever, we really need to move. If that's the case, it's not that that issue isn't important. It's just that it's going to be secondary to, you know, what's the least disruptive for the child. If you are moving for financial reasons and to try to give them a better life, that is a good reason. And that's good that you're not doing it just to try to get them away from the other parent. But in a lot of ways, the court does not value that um, standard of living improvement over the ability to maintain the relationship with the other parent. Okay, so improvement of standard of living is important, but not more important than maintaining that relationship with the other parent. Okay. Um, and again, if you're going a short distance, you know, I've got a client right now that's going to be moving about two or three hours away and, um, the other parent doesn't have so much time that they can't like accomplish that in sort of a condensed way. Okay. By doing long weekends and, you know, different things like that. So again, get creative, think outside the box of, how you're going to give the other parent as much parenting time as you can if your request to move the child is granted, okay? And that seems a little bit counterintuitive because I think a lot of times we're thinking, oh, I don't want to give the parent, the other parent very much time because if I do, they're going to let the child stay here with that parent. Um, that's actually not true. There's uh, a lot of weight given to the fact that if you're supporting the other person's parenting, then they know when you move, you're still going to support that person's parenting and make sure that there is a lot of um, contact between them and the child and that that relationship is maintained. And that's what they're looking for is which parent is going to help maintain the other parent's relationship. That is a very strong factor, particularly in a move away. I frequently talk about there's a very famous appellate case in California called La Mouche. It's spelled L-A-M-U-S-G-A. -S if you're in California, I would encourage you to look that up. But, um, you know, one of the big factors in that case, um, ultimately they did not let, I believe it was mom in that case, m move the children out of state with her because the court found that if the, if mom was allowed to move the children, um, she has so much animosity towards dad that dad would lose his relationship with the children. And so that was a big factor. And actually, Thomas and I did a podcast on that La Mouche case um, I, just a couple months before he passed. So I want to say it was like either March or April of 2023. There's a move away relocation um, podcast that we did. 
um, that would probably be very helpful for you to listen to if you're facing that. If your children are really, really young where they're like five, six, seven, and they've only been in that school for a year or so, and you know, particularly if you've got more parenting time, that usually helps you. But if they aren't as quite as entrenched yet, I think the court doesn't see that as disrupt as much of a disruption as if they're like, you know, 11, 12, and they're kind of going into those middle school years where they're more um, entrenched with their friends and their activities and all that kind of stuff. And then, of course, if you get into where you, you have a 15, 16, 17 year old type age, a lot of the times those children are going to be given a lot of say in the choice of whether they want to move with one parent or stay with the other parent because they have a lot of their own personal considerations that go into it. And the court feels like a lot of times at that stage that the child has the maturity to understand, you know, some of the ramifications of that decision, you know, being away from one parent versus the other and all that kind of thing. Okay. So um, you want to really focus on why this would be best for the children. And again, I, you know, I don't know that finances would be the key thing I would bring up. It might be a secondary issue, but one of the things you look at is, is quality of schools, quality of education. Maybe there's extended family where you're moving to. That is a factor. Again, it doesn't override the relationship with the other parent, right? So there has to be a balance of those things. And so if you are moving the child, um, you want to focus on the quality of the education you can bring in if the standard of living is going to be increased. Maybe you're moving for a job. Maybe you're being transferred. Maybe you have no choice. Um, a lot of times I find the court is a little more understanding about that. I've seen military people that are transferred and the child's allowed to go because they just don't, that person didn't have a choice, right? In, in the fact that that was happening. Those are all factors and ultimately the be very best thing you could do is figure is put a plan together of how you're going to facilitate as much time and visitation between the children and the parent that's remaining as much as you can after the fact. Again, I know it's counterintuitive. But that's actually something that will work hugely in your favor when you're asking for a move away. So I hope those few little tips have been helpful. Move aways are really, really complicated. Again, I would go out and listen to that old podcast of mine and Thomas's from a couple of years ago. That'll give you some great insight. Even if you aren't in California, it'll give you some great insight. But if you'd like to get more help on a move away or any other issue in your child custody case, you can go to divorceuniversityonline.com forward slash VIP dash coaching. There's a link on that page where you can book a time to speak to a member of my staff, learn more about my services and how I might be able to support you in accomplishing your child custody goals. See you guys next time. We'll grow in number, fueled by the